Welcome to the next module on RBO versus CBO. In this module, we are going to see the different types of optimizers that is RBO, which is rule based optimizer and CPO, which is the cost based optimizer. So this is the agenda that we are going to cover today. We are going to see in detail what an optimizer does and what are the advantages of having a CPO over the RPO. From 11G onwards, the development of RBO has been stopped and it has been deprecated from 11G. However, there is still a backward compatibility by passing a hint called as rule so as to make use of the rule based optimizer. So let's see what an optimizer is. Optimizer is nothing but a built in software that determines the most efficient way to execute a SQL statement. So what optimizer basically does is it generates n number of different plans in order to execute a query and whichever plan has the least cost or whichever plan is the most efficient plan that plan will be picked up by the optimizer to execute the SQL statement. So when I say optimizer chooses n number of different plans, the way it generates is say for example, there's a select query where there's a join between the employees table and the department's table. Then the optimizer can choose whether going with the employees table first or basically accessing the employees table first will lead me to the least cost or whether accessing the department's table first will lead me to the least cost. Based on whichever access path the optimizer generates a least cost, that plan will be picked up. Also, optimization is one of the most important step in query processing and must be completed for all the statements that has a query component. So what this means is all the DML statements like select, insert, update and delete and merge, the optimization must be completed for these statements so as to generate the most efficient plan. Also, the outcome of the optimization is an execution plan. When a user submits a SQL statement for execution, the optimizer performs the following steps. The first step is that the optimizer generates a set of potential plans for the SQL statements based on all the available access path and hints. And then it decides the cost of each plan. Now, in order to calculate the cost of each plan, the optimizer relies on the statistics which is stored in the data dictionary tables. Statistics include the information on the data distribution and storage characteristics of the tables, indexes and partitions accessed by the statement. So when you say statistics updated in the data dictionary, it means it should have information on the tables, indexes like how many number of rows the table has, how many number of distinct values it has, and how many null columns are there, etc., and so on. So it is very important to have the updated statistics of all the tables and the indexes. And if the statistics go stale, the optimizer will not be able to estimate the correct cost of each plan. And that is one of the reason why the optimizer chooses a bad plan over the good plan and your query will start performing poorly. Also, when you do a database migration from one server to another server, you also need to collect the fixed object statistics so that the optimizer is aware of the new CPU, the new storage information as well. So basically the information about the table statistics, index statistics is needed. And also the information about the OS statistics is also needed so that the optimizer can estimate the correct cost. With the help of these statistics, the optimizer compares the plan based on the cost and whichever plan has the least cost, that plan will be picked up by the optimizer. So this is the diagrammatic representation of an optimizer. When the user submits a SQL query, the query is first passed to the transformer. The query transformer determines whether it is advantageous to rewrite the original SQL statements into a semantically equivalent SQL statements that can be processed more efficiently. So what this means is, for example, if your query has multiple subquery, the query transformer can determine whether rewriting the SQL query can lead to better efficient processing. The query transformer then sends the transformed query to the estimator and estimator calculates the cost of each operation based on the statistics which is shared by the data dictionary tables. The plan generator then comes up with the best execution plan based on the statistics which is shared by the estimator and that best execution plan will be used by the SQL query to execute the operation. Query transformer passes the transformed query to the estimator 
estimator determines the overall cost of the given execution plan. The estimator generates three different types of measures to achieve this goal. First one is the cardinality. Cardinality is nothing but the number of rows in a row set or how many rows you are expecting from an operation or number of unique of distinct values. For example, in an employees table, there are 100 rows, then it means there are 100 unique employee IDs since the employee ID is the primary key in the employees table. So that means the cardinality of employee ID is 1 because the number of distinct values is also 100 and the total number of rows is also 100. So it means the lower the cardinality, the better the cost. So in our case, for an employee table with 100 rows, the cardinality of employee ID will be 1. So employee ID is the best column to be used in the WHERE clause of the SELECT statement. Second measure is the selectivity. Selectivity is nothing but the number of distinct values divided by the total number of rows. And the ideal value of selectivity is 1. If you take the same example again, the number of distinct values in the employees table is 100 and the total number of rows in the employees table is also 100. So 100 divided by 100 will give you a selectivity of 1. So this means again the column employee ID is having the best selectivity. Now if we take gender as the column, it is possible that there may be 50 rows of male and 50 rows of female. In that case, the number of distinct values will be 50 divided by total number of rows that is 100. So your selectivity will become 0 0.5. So this means if you are using gender column in the where part of the clause, it is probably is not highly selective and it can lead to a longer execution time. The third measure is the cost. Cost is nothing but it represents the unit of work or the resources used. For example, when you want to process a query, it needs to do I.O. operation, CPU usage and memory usage. In simple words, cost means how many I.O., CPU and memory usage is required to complete that operation. If statistics are available, then the estimator uses them to compute the measures. That is cardinality, selectivity and the cost. The statistics improve the degree of accuracy of the measures. The plan generator explores various plans for a query block by trying out the different access paths, join methods and join orders. Many plans are possible because of the various combinations of different access path, join methods and join orders that the database can use to produce the same result. The purpose of the plan generator is to pick the plan with the lowest cost. You can find more details about the access path, join methods and join orders in the forthcoming slides.